Hello! Jess here for Hero Arts with a technique I like to call Impressionistic Watercolor Stamping using our new liquid watercolors and bold print background stamps from the 2018 catalog. Hero Arts introduced a line of liquid watercolors a few weeks ago and you can find lots of inspiration on how to watercolor with them from our creative team and special guests who helped introduce them during our release blog hop. Personally, I love to play with watercolors and I love to attempt to paint with them, but I'm definitely not a watercolor artist. I'm more of a watercolor smush artist. But when I was playing with them last week, I noticed that the different colors really blend together beautifully to create a ton of different shades, and I thought a more organic smushing method, and yes, that's the technical term, might create some interesting colors and blends. For this project, I only used four colors, but as you can see from the finished cards, I ended up with way more than just four colors. Appropriately, I tried to use a color palette similar to Monet's famous impressionistic water lilies painting, and I think I got pretty close. So let's get started. First, I simply added random droplets of the liquid watercolors to my craft mat. I deliberately dropped the pine and indigo watercolors together to create a shade of teal, and then also added drops of mulled wine and deep ocean. Then I spritzed the craft mat liberally with water. I was literally trying this for the first time as I filmed this video, so you'll see that later versions use less water for a less impressionistic look, and I got a better handle on how much water to use as I went along. Next I smushed the Bold Prince Abstract Skyline background stamp into the ink and smeared it around a little bit. I carefully lifted the stamp and pressed it onto a piece of watercolor paper. I held it in place for a few seconds to allow the paint to soak into the paper and then lifted the stamp and placed it back in the wet paint. I blotted off the watercolor paper with a paper towel and set it aside to dry. I kept repeating this process using the liquid watercolors and water as a kind of ink pad. The more I repeated this process, the more the colors began to blend, and I ended up with really interesting shades of blue and purple. After I stamped several skylines, I repeated the same process using the Mandala Bold Prints background stamp and the same colors. You'll notice that the watercolor paper is slightly longer than the 6x6 stamp, and that was deliberate so that I could easily hold the watercolor paper down if it started to lift when I removed the stamp. Later I just trimmed the watercolor paper down to an A2 card base. You can see this time I played around with stamping the background stamp off once to remove some of the paint before bringing it to the paper which resulted in a less abstract look. And as a side note, 
cleanup is a breeze with this technique. After I finished, I simply spritz the stamp with water to help beat up the paint and then laid a damp baby wipe over the stamp and pressed a paper towel on top of it. The baby wipe and the paper towel soaked up all of the extra paint and water. I let the stamp air dry and then put it back in my storage pocket. I repeated the process one more time using much less water to get even more of the mandala pattern. You can see some of my favorite results here, and even the few areas with too much smushed ink were easily covered by an embellishment or sentiment later. After they were totally dry, I trimmed them down to a 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half panel and adhered them to top folding card bases. Unfortunately, I thought I pressed the record button when I was finishing the cards, but I didn't realize it wasn't recording until I was done. So I don't have a video on how I finished the cards, but it's a pretty easy, simple process to explain. For the card with the ink smush, I covered it with a vellum heart die cut from our nesting heart infinity dies. I also added a stamped house and sentiment from our Welcome to the Neighborhood set. I used several of the stamp and cut series to create sentiments for the other cards. I die cut the words three times from black cardstock and layered them together to create a thick chipboard-like embellishment. Then I stamped the rest of the sentiment onto a white label and adhered them to the card. This would be a fabulous technique for quickly mass producing holiday or birthday cards and I hope these different examples give you some ideas on how to finish the cards. If you have any questions about what I used for each card, please feel free to leave a comment here or on the blog and I'll try to answer your questions. You can find more information on the products I used today at the Hero Arts blog and there's a link in the YouTube description below. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, have a wonderful day and happy crafting. Bye!